Okay, now that this has been filled in, I'm just going to return this little skull back to its clay bed. The next step will be to fill around the skull where the clay meets the bone. This needs to be all filled in. All around the entire perimeter of the skull as well as inside the interior of the eye sockets as well as filling in under the zygomatic arch. We cannot have this we cannot have this this gap here right here. Now to do that I'm going to go back to the skull I was originally working on before I decided to step up and do this video. So I'm going to take the little subject we've been working on all this time, move her off the work board, and I'm going to move this big skull as the centerpiece of this project. As you can see, on this side, I have already filled in I've already filled in inside the eye socket. The clay has been brought up along the shape of the zygomatic arch and has been brought down along the side of the face, along the side of the canines I should say, and will be continued to be filled in around the entire perimeter of the skull, wherever there's a gap between the bone and the clay. This is what the filled side look like before it was filled. You see how deep it how deep it goes? You can see that the tool can go under the skull at this point as well as the gap under the zygomatic arch. This is all going to be filled and this is what we're going to do next. As always before starting any application of oil-based clay the heating lamp is turned on and this is only a 60 watt bulb remember. So this can be brought right down practically touching the clay. Not quite touching it, you don't want it to become molten lava, but you can warm the clay until you have it to where it's easily workable with the hands. Okay, let's bring the camera back down to the skull. Alrighty, and with my steel modeling tool, I'm going to begin by taking little pieces of clay and I'm just going to start dropping them into the eye socket, like so. Alright. We just roll little balls of clay and just start stuffing them down there. We want to get this, this cavity filled in. Okay, let me bring this up to see. Rem remembering what it looked like beforehand, while it was completely hollow underneath, we're going to fill all this in. I'm going to fill all around this with, with clay. On the inside, of the eye socket. Roll out whatever shape you need to get the job done. Attach it to the modeling tool. And use the modeling tool as an extension of your hand. Now, my big fingers, I really can't, cannot get in there properly to seat this clay the way I want it. So, I depend on my steel modeling tool. It is actually easier for me to contort myself by bending over to look into the eye socket than it is to pick it up and hold it by hand. So that's why it's down here on the workboard. I only bring it up to show the camera so the camera can see what I'm doing and then you the audience can see what I'm doing alright now with the skull moved 
you can see more of what I, what I will be looking at as far as filling in inside the area of the eye socket bones. Again, tearing off little pieces of clay, putting them in. Now, this wooden tool can really help flatten this out. Just like so. This has a little, <coughs> excuse me, this has a little rounded tip which can help get into areas where the steel tool might, uh, uh, to get into, might actually snap and break part of the bone, and that's the last thing you want to do on any of these things. That's why molds are being made, to avoid breaking bones. So you don't want to break them while you're making the mold. And you can see how nice this is really bringing this down to the level, the clay down to the level of the bone really evening it off down in there. Get a little more clay in here. You need to just apply as much of the clay as possible. And then we can work it and shape it and remove what we don't want in there after it's filled. All these little spaces between the clay and the bone need to be filled in solid. Silicone is a sneaky product. Um, many of the silicones out there take hours to set. Um, I'm going to be using a new, a newer silicone, at least new, new to me. Um, it has a approximately a five minute working time and a one hour demold time. In other words, you can pull the mold off the piece in an hour, usually at about 70 degrees or more. So in order to remove it quickly, a, the heat lamp will be put over the silicone during the molding process. But in the meantime, we're still working on this here. All right. That's just about where I want it at this point. Good. Now we bring the clay forward to the outside of the zygomatic arch. Now what's happening, quite simply, as I'm bringing the clay toward the outside of the, of the eye socket, you can see it's filling under the zygomatic arch from the inside, okay? Clever little thing. remove any excess clay. Now, we're on the outside of the bone at this point. Put my finger on the inside and butt this clay up under the zygomatic arch so that it makes contact with my fingertip on the inside of the eye socket. Smooth it. Now I'm going to add a little bit to the outside. From the outside. I not only want it built up, I want it built up strong enough to hold its own shape. 
Don't need excessive amounts of clay to do this. And like anything in the realm of mold making, whether you're doing special effects, or in this case, prepping a skull for mold making, time is a huge factor in these projects. Huge factor. But you can see what we've got here now. We have the zygomatic arch sealed in with clay. And we just want to trim it a bit so that the bone shows. We don't want the line of the bone covered. We, we want to we want a definite demarcation point for the mold to create this feature. That's just about where we're at and I, I'm just going to keep on going. Now I will return to that in a little bit but because of the time factor and time constraints we're going to concentrate on filling in this area around the socket of the canine and incisor teeth in front. Now yes you'll notice this little skull well this larger skull does not have clay in the front of the nasal passage yet or down the uh, center of the nasal bones along the seams and whatnot. That will be done shortly before I finish uh, shortly before the mold box is, is put in place. This has got a good interior detail in the nasal cavity. The nasal bones are intact on this particular skull and I would like to keep them so I don't want the clay drying out before I get a chance to put the silicone in place. So on this particular skull that'll be done after the fact. Uh, a lot of these are judgment calls you have to make on your own. If you have a lot of good detail on your skull such as those, those lacy little bones in the nasal passage and you don't want to destroy them, best thing to do is just before you're about to add your silicone and close your walls off and then add your silicone, then you want to go ahead and ever so gently put your water-based clay in place and I will show that being done. That will be, that will be recorded for you to see. I do not want to wreck this skull. This particular specimen, ooh, I guess it was about two years waiting time before I received this skull and the hide that went with it. Um, the skeleton that I finally received was a five-year wait. So there's a real real waiting time and a level of care that I want to take with these bones. I don't want to screw them up. I don't want to break anything. I don't want to destroy the integrity of the skull in its original form or of any of the bones. Uh, for this wildcat, well for this wildcat sculpture, the clay model, I have the entire skeleton. I have the spine, the tail, all four legs, feet, toes. I have the claws. Um, the skull that came with the large skeleton happens to be a very small and rounded wildcat skull, even though it's a large male. So it's so small and round that the U.S. Department of Fish and Wildlife thought it was the skull of the protected black-footed cat or the African spotted cat. And they weren't sure of releasing it to me when they got it there at customs. 
And I had to explain to them the difference between the two species of cat and told them if they look at the skeleton of the animal and see how large his skeleton is, they would realize that they did in fact have an African wildcat. And they don't normally reopen a case once they've made up their mind. But I had a young, a young uh, inspector who thought I was persuasive enough and he did reopen it and he did look at it again. They did some measurements and they then decided that I was being truthful with them. And uh, I got my skeleton. So after five years of waiting for the skeleton and about six months waiting for the U uh, U.S. Department of Fish and Wildlife to determine the species, I finally got my complete skeleton. So with that, I can tell you, it's not going into a sculpture on its own. A reproduction of that skeleton will be going into the sculpture. I will reproduce all the bones, pelvis, legs, spine, The tail will be used, I will simply use a wire for the tail. But now here, we have this all filled in, all this detail. Along the zygomatic arch. It's all filled in. Now I have to continue to smooth this and tend to it. And I'm going to use alcohol on a brush to smooth this out. And I'll show that in the next step. Okay, here we go. We have a little bit of, this is simply 70% uh, isopropyl or rubbing alcohol, real simple. And you can see here, uh, this has been mounded up. We have some oil-based clay here been mounded up in front of the uh, opening where the incisors was located. So now, to smooth this, there are two options for smoothing oil-based clay. One, you can have a small alcohol lamp and you can heat your modeling tool or you can use alcohol or you can use lacquer thinner. Alcohol uh, has less fumes and is, you know, will make you less high. If you enjoy getting high, you know, you would use your alcohol, but I really don't. I want to concentrate on what I'm doing. And you can see how that allows you to smooth the clay beautifully. And the alcohol also, it absorbs quickly, or um, not absorbs, I'm sorry, it evaporates quickly. There you go. It doesn't really absorb, it evaporates. But there, nice and smooth. Now you can go in and further smooth this by using brushes. Here we have a little uh, white nylon bristle brush. Dip it in the alcohol. Just wipe some off on a piece of paper towel and go along. This will give you smoother surface. It just makes for a neater appearance on the finished mold to have a smooth surface. It also allows you to really, really mark or give a good clean demarcation or separation line from the top of the skull to the underside mold, which will be made at a later time. Okay. Now here's where we're at right now. You can see how nice and neat this is. All right. I'll now take the alcohol and I will go ahead and smooth juncture along the side here using my brush on the underside of the zygomatic arch around to the rear of the skull behind the zygomatic arch I want the clay smooth there will be key locks worked in and you'll see what those are as I work along this mold and again, then another final swipe with the fingers and a little more downward pressure would help smooth the clay even more. 
Now in here, we have all kind of tool marks, and we don't want anything to be able to grab hold of the silicone. So the tool marks that are in there from applying the clay with the modeling tool, I'm going to use a little harder bristle brush. This is an older nylon bristle brush. The, brush, uh, the bristles have been actually cut down, purposely cut down and shortened, so I can apply more pressure with the brush and really help model my clay with the brush. And we smooth this like so. Wish I could do this without my hand getting in the way, but they're the only hands I have and I have to use them to do this. Well, let me see if I come in from the other side. Here we go. Now that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Coming from the front of the eye socket. We go in like so. Smooth the clay, nice and even. Very nice. Get the other side here. Let me come along the back of the skull. Smooth this clay work down. Come my finger and smooth that again. It's quite a difference now from when we started. Quite a difference from when we started to now. All around the skull. Now the little openings at the front of the skull have been filled in with the, with the water-based clay here and here, as well as the, the openings inside the back of the eye sockets, holes at the front of the eye sockets. I may have to go over those again. The clay, this is the kind of water-based clay that I like using for these projects. This has been done for quite some time and it's a little dried out and it's pulling away. So I will be going in there and refreshing that clay shortly before, shortly before I pour the silicone mold in place. Okay, I'm going to go along and check this over off camera, making sure everything is sealed and that all of the demarcation lines are nice and even. I have to go over with the tip of my stainless steel modeling tool. It has a kind of a spear point to it. And I'm going to go over, for example, along the front here, and just make sure this is completely smooth and completely, that, that, that there's no blending of clay to bone. I want to make sure that the bone is absolutely free of clay at the point where the upper and lower part of the mold are going to meet. I want a nice, clean, crisp, clear demarcation line. Just like so. And that's why I'm going over it the way I am. I'm going to continue to do this all around the skull, off camera, and when I come back, I will show you the complete, completely clayed in upper skull uh, and we will get ready for the next step, which will be building the box around the clay. Okay, there we have it. The skull is completely set into its bed of oil-based clay, sealed properly all the way around. And I'm ready to proceed with this particular skull on to the next step.
that being setting up the mold box, the surround around this skull. That can be done many ways. Uh, you can build a clay wall straight up and uh, you know straight up the sides and the front and join the clay all around. You can cut strips of foam core to the proper height or a little larger. <clears throat> In this case I'll be using something from uh, a previous skull making uh, and mold making project. This is actually this thin plywood which was used uh, when I created the mold box for the monkey bones, the vervet monkey bones. They fit around this quite well. They'll enclose it very well in fact. The clay can be pressed right up to these first two pieces which are hot glued together by the way. Okay. Then this piece will simply scap this was where this is scap. That was simply for the scapula. No. This will fit right into here. And I cut a new back panel, rear panel, to fit right down into here like so. Now this will completely enclose the skull. Now we'll view it from above and you can see what I've got here. Okay. After the box is hot glued together, I have to go in from the top with very warm, warm oil-based clay and fill in these little gaps that you see around the interior perimeter where the clay meets the wood so that there is no leakage of the silicone through the mold box onto the workboard. Before this is secured in place, I will put the clay, I'm um, sorry, the water-based clay around the opening of the nostrils, the, uh, the, the front of the nose cavity, and I will fill in the natural split that's here on the nasal ridge bones and the sutures along that part of the skull. I'll also beef up the water-based clay that was put into the back of the eye sockets as well. Uh, so that's where we are for now. And um, when I come back, we'll be assembling this box and actually pouring the silicone. Yay!